principles <laughs> you are dealing with spirit and all you have are principles you are, jo- you are a joker you are a joker what you call principles are, are observations of technocrats they looked at the life of people and they said okay if you do this, do this, do this this will work because they have seen the pattern in the life of people but they learned that their life was studied before those principles were born they lived in the spirit Elijah said before God whom I stand so you can't draw a principle from Elijah and apply it first you must come to the point where Elijah stood in the spirit before the principle will work the principle is drawn from the life of people so you will find out where they live from the quarters in the spirit where they enter before you draw the principle it's not to come before the Red Sea and stretch the staff some people come before challenge and they are prophesying what, what are you talking about? The man who prophesied said, I spoke as he commanded. You have not heard him. You want to prophesy what? You are a joker. You will sentence people to an early grave. Find out where they stood. Before they prophesied, they said, the word of the Lord came to me. They lived somewhere. They had a habitat in the spirit. Why do you think this man lived the way they lived? Lord looked at Abraham. He thought it was about technocracy. He thought it was about management. He thought it was about green pasture. So he wanted to choose a land. He looked at Jordan because he was full of green vegetation. Who told you is green vegetation that make for greatness? He journeyed to Sodom and Gomorrah. Meanwhile, Elijah was in Bethel in a dry ground. And all all, all Abraham was doing was raising altars. Raising altars. Lord went after green vegetation and he was in Sodom and Gomorrah and he didn't know about altars. Many years later, Sodom was burnt off. His family was lost. He became the ancestor of the Moabite. But for Abraham, many years later, his son was joining into a land of confusion and he laid on the altar and the heavens opened. The man knew how it worked. It was by the systems of altars. It's not where you are in the natural. It's where you are standing in the spirit. You don't have a habitat in the spirit you cannot rule among men. Principles are good, but go for life. It is life that illuminates and animates principles. There's no power in the principle that the spirit don't back. Until spirits back principles, they are dead. They will become plagues over your life. The children of Israel wanted to keep the standards of heaven. They wanted to leave the culture of heaven. And they told God, tell us whatever you want, we will do. Are you alright? He says, step away from the mountain. Hey. For 1,500 years, not one kept it. Principles will become a yoke if you don't know the spirit that powers it. Because what you call principle is a life beyond the mortals. It's a life beyond mortality. It's a life beyond flesh. It's life in the spirit. Kadosh. Trying to keep it calm. How many of you want a change? <laughs> ah, we read. My brother, see, we read. We read a lot of things. Ah, we read. I remember times when, for eight months, I didn't go out. I would just step out in the evening to stroll and get something to eat, come back. We were reading around the clock. We thought it was about knowledge. Those days when we come to speak, we will first of all enter into Greek mythology and tell you things that happened in ancient times. We will give you dates and occurrences. But we were dying. So sometimes you can't even go out because the first lady you see lost will grab you like this. 
going to continue like this, we now realize that there's a life. Jesus did not live holy because he was a man of discipline. The Bible said the mystery of holiness was at work in him. He entered somewhere, he touched the spirit. He's called the spirit of holiness. And it was on the strength of the ministry of the spirit of holiness that he was declared to be the son of God. Ah. So beyond knowledge, there are, ent- there are entities that keeps setting operation in the spirit. So we began to pursue the Holy Ghost with all our lives. Pursue the Holy Ghost with all our lives. How do you minister in the supernatural? You must know the Holy Ghost as a person and as a God. That was what we established in the morning. What you call power is the flow from his life. It's an overflow of his life. That's what you call power. So when you are pursuing power and you don't know how to interact with the being from whose reality power flow, you are wasting your time. That's why most of us are full of the Holy Ghost here, but it's in our spirit. It can't flow through our soul. Because our intimacy with Him is what creates a vent in our soul for the flow of His reality. People who are full of power are praying for power because they don't know the Holy Ghost. If they know the Holy Ghost, they will know they are already full of power. You are a tank of power. The problem is there is no flow. Your soul is choked. Because power is an overflow of His life. How did Jesus move in power? Go and check the apostles. They didn't receive any impartation or anything. When they received the Holy Ghost, the Bible says you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power. Jesus said, tarry here in Jerusalem until you are full of power. And when they receive power, Peter did not go to ask, how do I move in word of knowledge? How do I move in healing? They went out immediately and they began to speak in tongues. And they began to operate in diverse kinds of tongues. The next day, they were going to the temple to pray. They saw a crippled man say, stand up in the name of Jesus. The next day, <laughs> all the nine gifts of the Spirit began to manifest. In chapter 5, Ananias came and lied to him. He said, why, why has Satan entered your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? The guy began to move in healing, move in word of knowledge. How did, well, I thought they say you have three gifts of the Spirit. <laughs> the gift of the Spirit is not something the Holy Ghost gives you to keep and use when you want. The word gift is the word charisma. It means the way the Holy Ghost manifests through mortals. So if there is need for healing, the Holy Ghost will manifest as a healer. Then you call it healing. If there is need for a secret to be unveiled, the Holy Ghost manifests as word of knowledge. So you don't have one, two or three gifts of the Spirit. You have the nine gifts of the Spirit. Manifesting it is a function of yieldedness. Because Jesus responded according to the need that was on ground and according to the release of faith. So if a sick man come to you now and he has faith, the Holy Ghost will charismatize himself as healer. <laughs> well, we hear certain things and our, our faith is locked up. Say, me, I have word of knowledge. Me, I have word of wisdom. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He was full of virtue. So if you went, if it's healing that is needed, healing flows. If it's word of wisdom that is needed, wisdom flows. If it's word of knowledge that is needed, word of knowledge flows. Then had Bunker said there are tools of ministry. And God will not send you to go and build and then give you the instruments of a farmer. So if you show up, the assignment he gives you for the day, the tool is in your spirit. The Holy Ghost is the compendium of the tool of service. And if you yield, it flows. It's all about the Holy Ghost. There's a place for body, for hunger, for desire to manifest certain dimensions and then you build your faith in that direction and it becomes predominant. It doesn't mean that's what you have. There's a place for an office. You may be a prophet and on the strength of the prophetic office, your growth orientation is tilted in a certain direction. So the Holy Ghost compels you in a certain direction to grow in that office. And on the strength of that orientation of growth, certain particular gift will be stronger in your life. But it doesn't mean that's all you have. Have you not noticed God sends all kinds of people to you? Why will He send them if you are handicapped? Paul said, concerning spiritual gifts, I don't want you to be ignorant, but if you read it, the word gift is in italics. It means it's not there in the original translation. 
what Paul said was concerning the spiritual I don't want you to be ignorant and the next time the word gift was used is charisma this is how the Holy Ghost manifests that's why I say the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with her how the spirit chooses to manifest by time so if you know these things you open up to God I don't pray for word of knowledge I don't pray for healing I pray for the Holy Ghost to flow through me at will but a lot are you did stand up from Facebook you are going to minister and then you want to flow word of knowledge I will show you seven things very quickly before we pray. That if you give yourself to, you will minister in the supernatural. Ministering in the supernatural is not for a selected few. It's not for the apostles and prophets. It's for every believer. You are aware of that already. So you ask yourself, why am I not manifesting the supernatural? You will learn this thing, you will practice it. Because the power is in your consistent practice. Let me tell you what something. Most of the men moving in gifts of the spirit now, the first time they started, it was as if God hated them. There were many that prayed for the sick, and the moment they prayed, they die. They pray, they die. There are some that say, okay, it's compassion. God flow through compassion. So they go to the house every day and pray for 30 days, and the person doesn't improve. They kept at it until now you know some of them are healing ministers. The people who were praying for the sick and were dying. The people who were giving word of knowledge with assurance. And they will give word of knowledge. See, God wants to give you a wife. Say, uh -huh, I'm already married. <laughs> ah! Their faith will die. Then they will rise again. And as they pray, pray, God will still inspire them. And they will still go out. Say, go to the hospital on Friday. As they just pray for this person and they turn, the person begin to die. If not because people were there when he was praying, they would have said you have, you have killed the person. You have not prayed for somebody and the person died before. You, are ne you, are ne you, are, you never enter this journey where well, we well. ah, You don't know what is happening. <laughs> go see you an evangelist. Then you enter the first study to enter. They say, No, 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 please, we don't want noise. Go back, go back. Ah, Lord, you directed me here. God is teaching you how to walk. You have been crawling for too long. You will stand until you prove you want to stand. You heard that when you begin to pray, power will move. Then you are praying every day for four hours. <laughs> now you drink hot water naturally because you don't have a voice again. And then the more you pray, the more dry you become. God is teaching you how to walk. You have been crawling for long. You will pray like that for long. Then the time will come. You didn't go for the prayer meeting. And then they caught you, you stood up and you spoke. And God moved like lightning. <laughs> what happened today? You have entered something. But God had to check your consistency. Because spirits, they don't, be, they don't commit themselves to men. Until you join it to a level where you begin to demonstrate the character of a mortal being. That's when they can partner with you. Oh, you think it's about God will walk within you for long before he walks through you. Stand up, you pray and talk for five hours and then you think if you go out today, somebody will be healed. Then the next day, nobody will hear again. Everybody on Facebook, you will come and post it. And then the way you were walking into the meeting, you will post it. Everywhere they cough, you say, yes, yesterday, by the message of God, uh, we were in Wadata, the, the dead came back to life. The dead, the dead. Your message will become, the dead came back to life. The dead, the dead. God knows that if you enter what he, he has not prepared you for, he has shut the gate for you. You will pursue that thing you are pursuing until you become dead to it. That's when God will open the gate of life. Power, power, power. For one year you are praying. Pray there for long. When your appetite for power dies and God becomes your unique goal, then power will begin to follow you. It's a byproduct. 